Hi everyone and welcome to this Valkyrie Sound tutorial. In this video we're going to put together a system in Unreal Engine for generating procedural music. There's lots of different ways that we can use procedural generation to influence what we hear in games and how music and sounds behave. In this video we're going to just look at a very simple setup that's going to give us a reasonably complex musical soundscape. This video is focused on making blueprints in Unreal Engine 4 to generate procedural music. To make your own sounds you want a, a bass layer and melodies. As you'll see in the video I have four different bass layers and I've got a number of melodies that I lay on top. The more assets you're able to create, the more bass layers, the more melodies, the more variety you can provide your players with when they're playing your game. Whether you're using your own sounds or some you've downloaded, make sure that the format is 16-bit and 44.1 kilohertz. Once you've imported all of your sounds, the bass layer queue is the first thing that we're going to create. In the content browser, right click, sounds, and sound queue. And this is one that I've already put together. What I've done here is just drag in the bass layer sounds, which I've called drones. And these are the notes that I'm using in each of those. And we get those by going to the WAVs selecting all of the WAVs that we want to include. And back in the sound queue, we can right click, and you can see we've got a from selected option here. So all of those assets we have selected in the content browser, we can now hook up straight away to the crossfade by param node, which is the one that we want. And you'll see here that I've connected this first one to the first input and to the fifth input as well. So we're then gonna connect the crossfade by param node to the looping node, and that goes to your output. So if you take a moment just to look at what's going on in the crossfade, we've set a param name. I've called mine drone because that's the assets that I've plugged into it. And we have the fade in and fade out, and you can see we have them for each of the inputs. So what we have in the blueprint is a timeline. And the timeline, as you can see, goes from a zero value at zero time up to a value of five by 180 seconds or three minutes. We're using the timeline to feed a float value into the sound queue, and as that float value increases from 0 to 5, we're going to move through the sound queue param node from the first input to the fifth input. Next, we're going to create the blueprint. So in your content browser, right click, go to blueprint class, and you want the actor type, as I've got here. You want to drag in the sounds that you're going to use and put them in the upper left panel here. Now I've already got those sounds in, so I'm going to remove those. Get the drones, or whatever you've called your base layer, and drag that into the event graph. From there, you want to get a play node under the audio section. And you want to hook that up to the event begin play node. Next, we're going to add an event tick, and from that, we're going to add a sequence node which is this one here, and a flow control. So the first pane goes back to that timeline. So inside this timeline, like we looked at before, we've got a value of zero at zero time, and we've got a value of five at 180 seconds in. Set the length to match, and I've set it to loop. So this is a float track, which you get by pressing the F here, and I've just named mine value, but you can call yours whatever you want. Back in the event graph, from the timeline node, we're going to drag out and create a new variable. So you can drag off here and promote to variable. The variable I've called parameter value, and this means I can call it from other blueprints to drive other functions as well. Next, we're going to drag off from here and make sure context sensitive is ticked and go set float parameter. And then you want to make sure you select the drones or your base layer. And I'll give you this setup here. And that's it for the first step. This is where we get to start putting the sounds together. Drag the parameter value in as a get node. And from that, we want a less than float node. And if that value is less than one, we know that we want the first input sound to be playing. From there, we put a branch in. And from the true output, we add a do once node. And we're gonna come back, as you can see, and reset this node. From the do once node, we are gonna run out another branch. And this is to check that the previous melody isn't still playing. I only want one melody playing at any one time. What I'm going to do is, we've got melody 5 here, which is going to be the last melody. At the very bottom here, this is the melody that's been triggered to play. 
I'm testing up here to see if Melody 5 is still playing. If it is, then we're going to go up to a delay node for 4 seconds. And once that's timed down, we are going to go back to the branch and check again if it's still playing. And if it stopped playing, we're then going to keep going. Really, this second delay here is just to create some extra space so we don't have all of the melodies falling in line one after the other. Next, we trigger the first melody to play. And again, we have a little setup here, so we route this to a delay. We check to see if the first melody is still playing. If it is, we go back and check again. And once that value returns as false, we just go all the way back to the do ones node and reset it so that when we get back to this first layer again, we know that we're going to get the sounds from melody one to play at the same time. One thing that's important to note is on this third delay, I've made it longer than the other delay here. And that's because in testing, I found that it was hit and miss as to whether or not it would actually recognize that this sound had finished playing. It might sometimes go back and replay that sound whilst it had also satisfied the criteria here to go and play the second melody. The next layers are pretty much the same as that first one, with one exception, and that is this little bit here that we have at the start at each of these other layers. So for the second input, we need to be sure that that value is between one and two. So what we have here is the parameter value we've dragged off again. We have a less than node. Is it less than two? If it is, is it more than one? If it is, then we go ahead, we check to see that the previous melody isn't still playing. If it is, we go back and check again after four seconds. If it's not, we have that delay to create some space. Do once node, then we trigger the play node for the second melody. And we keep doing that all the way down. It's exactly the same setup for the rest of the lines. And you can add as many layers in after that as you want. That's that done. Once you have that set up, you are finished. You can drag and drop this into your level, anywhere in the level, and it'll work fine. What I'm also going to have a look at here is what's going on in the melodies. So this is our first melody, and you can see we've got three different sounds here that are hooked up to a random node. We have equal weighting for each of the inputs, and that connects to your output node. So these lights also trigger a sound. We've got song lights and song steps. So let's open that up. And as you can see, we have the light asset here and we have the collision box. When the player enters the collision box, in this case, the song light one is getting the parameter value from the third person character. It's then going to a round node, which basically gets that parameter value, the float value there, and rounds it to the nearest integer. That is then fed into a set integer parameter node. And that's connected to this sound cue here, the Celeste group, and it has the in name of Celeste group. So if we open up the Celeste group, you can see here that we have a parameter which is called Celeste group. And to each of these inputs, a group of sounds is connected by a random node. And as you can see from the comments here, all of the notes that are hooked up to each of these random nodes are consonant with whatever drone is playing at that particular time. And if we open up the song steps asset as well, we have a very small collision box, which is just peeking out over the edge of the step. We're going to cast it again. It's the third person character in this particular setup. We're going to cast to that to get the parameter value. And then we are going to round that down again. And we're using the same sound cue with the same in name and playing that sound. So if you have a look and see how these perform in the game, So here's our base layer, and let's just walk around a little bit. And I've died. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, I hope you found it useful. Take care and enjoy making your own projects. It would be really interesting to see what you came up with using what we've covered in this video. So once you finish your project, if you're happy to share it, or even if you haven't finished it, if you're happy to share it, please post a link and we can all have a look and see what you were able to create.
Have fun and take care.